Okay, in this set of video lectures, I'm going to talk about some objections that can be made to Kant's ethical theory and some possible replies that Kant could give in defense of his theory against these objections. The first possible objection that I'll consider is that consequences are actually morally important. I, now, I think it's um, pretty uncommon for people to be convinced by this objection, but some people are, so I will just briefly mention it and, uh, and uh, talk through it. You may remember the uh, case of the, the doctor who was well-intentioned but um, ended up producing a lot of bad results, dead patients from their surgeries, versus a doctor who was ill-intentioned, didn't really care about their patients, but just so happened to produce a lot of good results that their patients um, uh, survived and did well. And it could be argued, remember, and you remember that Kant had said that the first of those two doctors was the better doctor, morally speaking, or at least that, that Kant doesn't discuss this example in particular, but that is Kant's view about the goodwill, that what's really important for morality is the intention of a person, not the effects of their actions. Well, some people, um, and in particular some utilitarians, would like to say that, look, the only thing that matters for the goodness or badness of an action is its outcomes. Um, if a if hundred doctors, like the second doctor, produced good, better outcomes than a hundred doctors like the first doctor, then we should try to make more doctors like the second doctor, and we should call that doctor a good doctor, right? A morally good doctor, because the results of their actions are better. And that's the only thing that we really should care about in morality. So if you think that consequences are important, that morality is not just a matter of the intentions of a person, but that part of somebody's moral goodness or badness depends on the actual consequences of their actions, then you think that this is something that Kant's ethical theory is missing. Another objection that could be made is that morality isn't just about duty, as Kant seems to think it is, but also about sentiment, that is about how we feel about meeting our duties. And you remember that Kant had discussed an example of this in the first section. Kant's example uh, considers two types of philanthropists, that is, people who do charitable work uh, for the benefit of others. One of these philanthropists really loves what they do. You can imagine them saying, you know, if you ask them, why do you help so many people? Why do you do all of this charitable work? They say, I just love helping people. It makes me feel good to see them more comfortable and happier than they were before they received my help. And I just, I just like to see the smiles on the faces of children that, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that they eat well, and it just makes me feel good. Okay. Um, so this is the, is what we could call an enthusiastic philanthropist. The other type of philanthropist we could call a reluctant philanthropist. This is someone who does the same amount of charity work as the enthusiastic philanthropist. But when you ask them, why do you do it? Why do you do so much charitable work? They say, you know, I do it because I, I feel it's my duty. And you ask them a little bit more, you say, well, you know, does it, does it make you feel good inside to see the smiles on the faces of the children and so on? And they say, look, to tell you honestly, I don't really like people. Um, I don't. I, I. I don't really like doing the work, but I feel like somebody has to do something. That it's the right thing to do. Okay. So Kant says that the second person, the reluctant philanthropist, is more clearly behaving out of a sense of duty than the first person, because the first person uh, may be just acting out of their inclinations. They may be doing the charitable work because it makes them feel good and not because it's the right thing to do. And Kant thinks that doing things because they feel good is definitely not a good moral motivation. Because the second philanthropist, the reluctant one, is doing what they're doing out of a sense of duty, that is, they're doing what they're doing because they believe it's what morality requires of them, okay? Um, and they're clearly not doing it because they're inclined to do it or because they want to do it or it feels good to them to do it, then that means that the second person is more moral than the first person, according to Kant. It's more clearly moral, we should say, because the first person may be acting out of a sense of duty, but the point is that 
because they also have the inclination, it's hard to tell whether or not they're acting from a sense of duty. So the way Kant puts this is the second type of philanthropist is more clearly moral. It's more obvious that they're acting from a sense of duty and therefore are acting for the right moral reasons than the first one. Now, the objection here that can be made is that it seems like maybe Kant has got this wrong. So someone may say, upon reading this example from Kant and looking at the rest of the Kantian system, they may say, um, look, Kant, if morality is about anything, it's about feeling good when you help people, right? I mean, a good person is one who feels good about making other people feel good. So if your moral theory doesn't include that, you must have taken a wrong step somewhere. You must be wrong about something. Um, this person, this reluctant philanthropist, it seems like there's something actually morally wrong with them because they don't feel good about helping people. That seems like a problem. Kant thinks it's not a moral problem that they don't feel good about helping people. The reluctant philanthropist can be um, fully moral, they just have to recognize what morality requires of them. Whereas um, the person making this criticism of Kant uh, would say, no, it, it, they, they would say, no, the enthusiastic philanthropist is clearly the better uh, and more moral person here. Okay, so this um, standoff you can you may also notice is kind of a standoff between Nell Nodding's way of thinking about ethics, the care ethics style of thinking about ethics, or what uh, in the 1700s were called moral sentiment theories. And these are actually some theories like the theory of David Hume that uh, Kant is arguing with. Even when he makes this example, he has in mind theories like Hume's and he's arguing with them. Um, but this debate continues. People continue to be um, divided about whether morality should be considered at least partly a matter of how people feel when they help other people, or whether morality ought to be considered primarily uh, or solely a matter of uh, people acting because they believe it's what duty requires, rather than acting out of some sentiment or feeling for others.